Woo. We're live. Um. Uh, well, friends, it's it's been a day. Honestly. Um. I'm not exactly sure what I want to print or paint. Huh. Um, do have oh, I do have one moment here I uh, finished printing a uh, little snap, which let's go to the the close-up view. All right, that's kind of a, a fancy little gizmo. Goes together. And then comes apart. So. It was nice when you print something that actually seems like it functions. And that actually. Shazam! Actually functions uh, well enough that I. I like it. Um, I'm trying to print something. Um, I have a. A mask of sorts that has like one of those like two bands on each side of your cranium and only one of the bands uh, is connected this I think is too short because the bands like barely come up to like my temples so I'm not sure where the where the crap the other piece went uh, so um, I was thinking at least for tonight um, I have two things that I want to paint maybe three and just based on how long this little hotness took last time, uh, I do want to paint some more uh, on the ridges here. Um, I thought maybe I'd just do that uh, to start off with, because it's because it's easy enough. And that's where I've been. Um, I uh, hope everyone's having a good day. I had a, I had a day. Um, one of those days that I don't know. It was a hard day. Um, it was not hard in like some actual real problem sense. Uh, just to, just to get that out there. Um, that that makes me think. You, I want to see if I can find. Uh, I want to see if I can find a. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Uh, let's see, window capture. Yes. Okay. I wonder, ooh, I wonder if you'll be able to hear this.
<laughs> so I'm not usually a Friends fan. Uh, though I will say that I recently watched it and uh, enjoyed it more, <laughs> more than old Neil would care to admit. The reason why that came to mind um, was because I, uh, I had some feedback today uh, from a co-worker that, uh, well, feedback. Um, it was more just like it was pointed out to me that I have some shortcomings, some weaknesses that I need to work on. And, uh, and in the process of working on those shortcomings, uh, that I, <laughs> I laugh now, uh, I made the mistake of asking, uh, the various people that the shortcomings affected. And I'm trying to talk nebulously, not because it's such an egregious thing, but more just because like, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to like one grump about coworkers cause that's stupid. It, like this is a learning thing. And two, because, uh, you know, cause I'm trying to be sensitive, make sure nobody else gets, you know, he's sort of like thrown under the bus feelings or something. But I, uh, I made the, uh, mistake of asking multiple people, uh, you know, like, here's here's something that's been pointed out to me, a shortcoming. How can I improve here? And uh, <laughs> getting getting three people worth of feedback on uh, how you suck and could do better um, is is a lot to take in. And uh, but it reminded me of that uh, of that friends clip because you know I I had my cry, I had my my Rachel moment of getting sensitive and, uh, you know, being sad and defending myself and going like, but you know, that's not how I saw it in my mind. And, uh, and I have a, I have a good friend that occasionally will, when I'm feeling not, not like, I mean, he, he's very good about listening, uh, to, you know, my, my frustrations and my feelings and stuff, but occasionally just to try and like, liked in the mood and to, you know, kind of get across a bit of a life lesson too. He will, he will send me that clip and just be like, Hey, like, did, did a loved one die? Did you have to, you know, like that clip says, like, did you have to prostitute yourself to survive? No. Well then maybe just maybe you're going to make it. <laughs> um, and again, that's that's not a one size fits all kind of <laughs> kind of response to things, uh, because because who wants? To, oh, I'm doing it again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I uh, I'll switch over to switch over to here as we're as we're doing this. Um, yeah, it's it's not a one size fits all kind of uh, response to things, but occasionally it's. Uh, it's what I've needed to remind myself that, like, you know, it's okay to have crummy days. It's okay to have days where you're just like, uh, I'm, I'm feeling blue. I'm feeling frustrated. But to at least kind of, um, count the, count the real cost thereof. And to see if, um see if you're not maybe like letting yourself get more uh, wrapped up in something that uh, maybe it deserves but then on the other hand like your feelings are your feelings and so you know also maybe like don't don't let anybody else tell you how you should or shouldn't feel about something right it's uh, perspective should be should be shared not uh, forced or guilted into or things like that so that's certainly not what I'm trying to do um, move this mic over here. Uh, so yeah, uh, I am, ooh, I am loving that I am having three concurrent viewers right now, uh, as, as, uh, as a reward for you fine people. I promise this will not go two hours and 20 something minutes like the last stream did. <laughs> oh man. That was too dang long. Um, I am very pleased with how this came out. 
uh, I got to show a coworker the next day, right? So we could go tomorrow. Uh, who's a big, uh, who's a big Mad Max fan? And he was like, "Oh, that's like the most amazing thing I've ever seen." So, you know, uh, we had to do it over, uh, over like phone chat or whatever. Um, so it's not like. Thankfully, the fidelity of such cameras are low enough that I actually look like a super painting pro uh, in low definition. But still, it was, um, you know, it was nice and fulfilling. It's cool to have uh, have people who are, you know, fans of such a thing be like, oh, that looks awesome. Um, so... But yeah, I, I don't plan on painting this the whole night, but I just want to kind of wrap this up because it has been sitting on my desk uh, mocking me. So I figure we'll go over these, like these studs or bolts or whatever you want to call these. Um, uh, it, should, it should go rather quickly. And... Uh, So, um, but yeah, if, uh, I always just like to assume that the people who are watching this are like, um, are people I know. If I'm being, um, perhaps, uh, pessimistic, I imagine that it might just be bots. <laughs> so if, uh. If you're a YouTube bot, please, uh, please give a shout out. Uh, and either way, I have found, uh, I have found great catharsis in sitting in my basement, talking to myself and watching paint dry and streaming such activities to the internet. Uh, I have also been thinking that I want to do some sort of a, uh, oh, that's probably going to be too much, yeah, we'll see. Um, kind of start down on this next guy. Um, I have thought that I would like to do a music section. Uh, then I realized that I might be inclined to try and sing on camera and uh which which I've done before. I really enjoy singing. But these days what I've been learning as far as singing goes is much more raw and random. Uh Hey hey hey. Well, hottest of dangs. Parasect forever. Parasect, parasect, bless your soul. <laughs> I, I am delighted and tickled that you are not a bot. <laughs> I, uh, I hope that your evening or your morning or wherever the devil you're viewing this from, because uh, I don't, I don't recognize the name. So I mean, you could be like my best friend. Well, if you're my best friend and I don't recognize your name, that probably gives us both something to think about. But, I, uh, I don't recognize your name, but I'm happy to have you here. And, uh, but yeah. I've, I've thought about doing a, uh, kind of a live music session. I, um, I've played in a couple bands over the years, and I thought of trying to do some sort of a live... Uh, but remote kind of thing that uh, that has always been such a such a tricky thing to pull off because because of 
just enough delay, right? Uh, formerly known as latency, but there's just enough delay between sending signals between places that um, you don't necessarily mind it or notice it in, you know, a work uh, telecommuting call or something like that. But when it comes to music, where you need uh, the beat, kind of that like send and response um, kind of, oh dang, I'm putting my, <laughs> putting my hand in the paint. Um, you kind of need that send and response to be very, um, very snappy. And uh, while we have certainly figured such out with uh, recording devices, um, making it quite frankly amazing what you can do with like even a $150 um, kind of off-the-shelf um, interface and uh, and a simple microphone or uh, line in you know just like plug your guitar into your audio interface um, on the other hand uh, yeah we have not conquered that for distance um, guitar playing there is a program a number of years ago. It's I mean it's probably still around. Oop, went a little crazy there. Uh, called Nin Jam, and uh, that was that was really rather good. Let me see if I can. This camera is just a little a little laggy. See, yeah, hi. Maybe we can apply. Give me one second here. Let's wait for it to come back. There we go. No. Just a little just a little laggy. I'll have to address that in a bit. Um but yeah, this uh, program Ninjam, um, it was kind of interesting because it basically, instead of trying to figure out a way to beat this inherent uh, round trip uh, time of data, it instead would basically have a synchronized, um, synchronized uh, metronome. And you could basically just kind of assume that what you were hearing was a measure uh, a measure like in the past and it actually it actually worked pretty decently from what I remember it was it was kind of I don't know it was definitely uh, when I tried it like prototypical software so it wasn't super great but you know it was kind of cool um so just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm going back over these parts. Um, I definitely went into a bit more detail last time, but something that I really like about this model is that uh, it has an inherent an inherent uh, roughness to it that lends itself both to 3D printing and also like painting being um, not not trying to excuse sloppiness but um, but you know I mean as you can see here uh, paint maybe drying in a way that kind of like catches some of the light uh, I mean it's it's kind of rough right uh, but where and this is where um, airbrushing definitely comes in into play and for some models and for some things like that I, I have an airbrush it's something I want to bust out on this channel on this show um, and <laughs> I, I figure that's what we could do next time right that it'll be something like come <laughs> come laugh at Neil as he tries to learn how to airbrush really badly <laughs> <laughs> because oh man because I can guarantee you right now that 
um, if if you're looking at this and you know anything about painting, you're going, mm, this guy's methodology is questionable. This is after I've painted, I don't know, I've painted a fair amount of things. And uh, still got that uh, beginner's luck charm. <laughs> but when it comes to airbrushing, oh boy. I, um, I imagine that is going to be, uh, that is going to be a laugh fest, a riot, if you will. Um, so, yes. But it's okay. I figured that uh, if you're gonna, I think I've long said, if you're gonna make mistakes, at least catch them on camera. Um, then you can, then you can watch them over again and nothing else. Hopefully they kind of uh, sting enough that uh, you kind of, I mean, I guess you either like go like, yep, that's me, right? And it kind of makes you realize, yep, that's, that's just kind of what I do. Uh, I'm kind of silly in, you know, that way. Uh, it's seeing myself on camera, especially in a live, um, a live environment. I, uh, recently did a, I mean, what was it? I recently did a, um, a presentation at a, uh, local coding meetup. And I mean, you could go and watch it on my channel, right? So go, go see it. Um, and, and watching this, watching this coding meetup, it was, uh, it was obvious how many times I said, right. And like, and I've probably said it a few times now on this channel or this uh, show, if you will. But that was not something I loved. But what you gonna do? At some point, you gotta, um, you gotta kind of realize that maybe that's just something you do. And you either say, yeah, I don't like that I do that. I'm going to change that. Or you own it and say, yep. Um, some of the feedback today that I received that, you know, stung a bit was, uh, I am, uh, I tend to not be as present in some of the meetings that I attend as I need to be. And that causes me to occasionally miss some, you know, critical pieces of information that, uh, later on I figure out. And, and again, I, I mean, I'd, just, just in case my boss is watching, uh, I'd like to think that I am not missing out on things that are, you know, so critical that it's like, oh, that's why we were months late on a project because Neil is an idiot or, you know, not paying attention on his phone. Like, no, no, I, I, I don't think it's that bad. Um, but it is something, again, that uh, I think I can work on. Um, and I think I've also realized that, you know, I probably need to remember, because again, I, I had a rough time, uh, you know, hearing this and think about it. No, it wasn't an actual real rough time, uh, per the advice of Phoebe, <laughs> uh, but it, you know, it, it stung. I mean, that's, that's how I'm phrasing it in my, in my own way. Um, it stung. And, um, and just realizing that, you know, there's, as you take criticism, you have to be able to also remember the many good things that you, that you have, that you offer. Um, I know some people that, uh, struggle to be personable, uh, and, you know, and, and they've commented to me and said, oh, you know, like you, you're just better at, at talking to people or, or just like, you're very, uh, like 
uh, at ease talking to people and, and I wish I could do that better um, you know and, and that's always kind of made me laugh because I'm going well like thank you that's very nice of you um, let's see if I can get that yeah metallic on metallic um, so we've got these little like ooh yeah these little accent parts that stand out from the brass now that's awesome. Um, but this this has made me laugh because I'm going, yeah, but like you're super detail oriented. The the way you approach like logic problems, man, I, I wish I could do that. Um, it's just not something that comes as quickly to me, right? Uh, and which one is, is better? Well, it kind of depends on the situation. As far as like a like, I don't know. Uh, I think there are some universal traits that you don't have to have, you know, personality type A, B, or C to, like, get. Um, being being loyal, being honest, uh, keeping your word, and, you know, keeping commitments. Like, those are things that hopefully you are doing no matter who you are, no matter what personality type you have, etc. Um, whereas, you know, something where it's like, okay, maybe, maybe Neil's a smooth talker. Uh, and I'm working on being more uh, analytical in my, um, you know, when I attend a meeting uh, to be more data driven or something like that. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard it said something along the lines of like, well, you know, like, um, I don't want a pacifist in my, in my foxhole. It's like, well, no, I, I guess if you're, I mean, if it's a time of war or something, you know, and you got to put bullets down range, okay, yeah, you might want someone who is, uh, who is knowledgeable in such a subject uh, to watch your back. But let's not discount that perhaps in other times, uh, I mean, a pacifist, maybe that's, that's, uh, an extreme idea. I'm just thinking more of like, maybe you don't want someone who is like gregarious and Mr. Smooth Talker when it comes to like, <laughs> we got to fight this war, buddy. But you know, when in times of peace, uh, there are skills and abilities there that also, um, also uh, matter and I think that if you're anything like me it's super easy to get caught up in the places um, that life others yourself uh, bring to your attention and point out that hey you kind of stink in these areas right you just you got to work on this and those can be very disheartening and I think a way I've learned to really make sure that I am kind of accepting those moments is, yeah, okay, it can sting, but uh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't feel like, like ah, like I'm I'm just no good. There's no there's no redeeming qualities about me because that's that's not true for anyone. Right, like, ugh. I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done, uh, or haven't done. Right, uh, everyone's gonna still have something left in life they want to do. Uh, <laughs> makes you think about the. Uh, makes me think about the, the people who talk about. Um, certain, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. Um, makes me think about, uh, people that talk about like music being just like dead or bad or, or no good after a certain, uh, artist or band or something. And, uh, that, that always has kind of irked me. Um, I certainly have no problem with people saying that they love a band or that it's their favorite band. Like that, that totally makes sense. Um. I'm not sure what is, what is beeping here. Sorry. 
uh, or maybe you can't even hear it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe only I'm here. I'm hearing voices. Yeah. Um, I will say that, uh, oh, oh, there you go. Yep. It's the silly, the silly, uh, over top camera. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is this is the joys of having uh, old iPhone cameras <laughs> as your as your webcam. Um, so um, I will say that uh, yeah, when when people say that like no band was ever good after such and such a band, I just think that's such a it's such a bleak outlook on art, right? It's okay to have a favorite period, but if you really believe that, that everything is just like garbage after a certain thing, I don't know. Uh, what a what a sad state of affairs. Um, in the same way that, like. There's always got to be something else you can look forward to. You may have... This will this will perhaps get a little religious. I don't care. It's one of the greatest life lessons I think I, I learned. Um, I, uh, I was a uh, missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in, uh, in a country called Finland. Um... I love Finland. Finland is Finland is an awesome place. Um, they have they have crazy cold winters, and it's very dark and uh, builds character. Uh, but definitely in the summertime, it is some of the greenest and lushest and most warm and temperate and beautiful stuff you'll ever see. Um, I remember, I remember I was visiting a city and I talked to this little old lady who was like. I mean, I, I want to say she was 90. Uh, the sweet lady has probably passed on uh, from now. I, I, I mean, I met her months, and uh, it was, yeah, it was kind of a chance meeting. <clears throat> I remember meeting her, and she kind of, she basically expressed like, you know, I'm old, and I'm kind of waiting just to die. <laughs> and I just remember, you know, I'm some, like, doe-eyed uh, 19 year old kid or whatever. So I'm just like, no, like, like I'm barely starting life. Like, no, don't, don't die. Like, uh, no. Um, and it came to me again, missionary guy. So, you know, my head is very much in the religious space. Um, I shared with her a section of, uh, the book of Mormon, right? Obviously, if you've heard of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormons or, you know, all that stuff, the Book of Mormon is definitely a foundational uh, element um, to the faith. And uh, in this book of uh, Moroni, right, it's like the last book of the book, um, you know, like subsection of the book, um, this, uh, this guy Moroni, right, a prophet, basically just says like, look, I'm the last of my kind. Uh, he's writing at the end of this book, takes place you know 400 uh, AD his civilization uh, has been killed off uh, you know there's backstory there's lessons of morality and, and interesting things there but he basically kind of writes and says you know I kind of thought I'd be dead by now but I'm not so I'm gonna write down um, I'm gonna write down some stuff and you know maybe it's going to be of use to somebody and he proceeds to write down uh as far as like again as far as doctrinal significance uh, pretty pretty significant stuff and uh stuff that certainly uh has impacted my life for the better uh and i saw it impact many other people's lives for the better and uh i had I had always kind of glanced over his initial, like, well, guess I'm still here, so I'll try something. Uh, but in that moment, in that moment, it really, like, it really hit me, right? And, you know, I shared this with this lady, and again, I, 
I don't think she went on to run marathons and to, uh, you know, be the, the next saint of Calcutta, you know, Mother Teresa kind of, kind of level stuff. Um, but I think that just like thinking like every, everything after the Beatles, everything after Jimi Hendrix, everything after Smashing Pumpkins, Pink Floyd, like those are all bands and people that I like. If you really think that everything after them is just dumb and bad music, that's, that's such a defeatist attitude. And in the same way that if you really think that like, well, eh, like I, I don't really know what, what is left that I could do. It's like, oh, guys, there's, there's always hope. And there's always, there's always more you can do. You may not get famous doing it. You may not, uh, you know, get, get like the recognition of the world. Uh, but having that attitude of what, what else is there out there for me to recognize today that I could like do a little bit more of, um, that attitude opens your mind and opens your heart, I guess, to get a little, a little touchy feely on it. Um, it opens it to, uh, you really being able to pay attention uh, for opportunities. Whereas if you have the attitude of like the, I guess I'll just wait around to die. Right. Um, I think that similarly and oppositely, um, does that make sense <laughs> in a similar yet opposite way, uh, has a way of having you miss those opportunities because you're sitting there going like, Ugh. like I'm just, I'm just dying. Right. Uh, this camera. Uh, I'm hoping you guys can't hear it. I keep thinking I can because it's like in my ear, but it's like dig, 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 and it's driving me absolutely batty. <laughs> let me let me see if I can fix this because it's it's driving me insane. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. Uh, okay. So we got right those uh, rivets painted on there more. Um, I do these tubes. If we were to pull up a picture of Immortan Joe, you would see that these tubes are. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I gotta hear this. <laughs> yeah. This is <laughs> it's driving me nutty. It's just hearing that like Windows, like, you connected something. Deek, deek, deek. I'm just like, it's driving me crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly feel pretty good about this uh, being, like, a done thing. Uh, there's some elements. Let me uh, switch over here. Um, there's some elements here I really kind of like. The, uh, like, this, like, a wet kind of look down here. But I have to remember that this wasn't really meant to be like an actual jaw piece, right? This was meant to be like a, you know, it was meant to be a mask. Um, so, yeah. I think there's... I'm trying try to figure out like what is what is going crazy I'm just gonna st start like quitting things and start shutting down the computer until I'm basically doing this with 
Um, yeah, that's funny. All right, well, sorry guys, I'll figure it out later. Um, so I, let's see, the one place I do want to go back over this, oh, this was the burnt umber thing, huh? Yeah, this may be a little bit rough or tougher to do, because uh, this was a bit of, uh, this was a bit of color matching. But I think if we, if we go light, go small, um, like Hannibal in the Alps, <laughs> Um, you'll be able to get a little bit of, um, and this is where I'm just trying to get a little bit of brown to, um, just kind of, uh, get some of the places where I went a little bit too, uh, too zealous with the silver. And kind of, yeah, got into. Um, it, it does make me think about like, what would it take to actually make this out of uh, out of metal, right? Um, again, I've I've got a great buddy of mine um, who is, and he is like, way more versed in uh, prop making. Um, he is an incredibly talented and creative person and um, our our schedules and stuff don't always line up and I uh, someday I gotta I gotta make a movie with this guy because he he is he is a force of nature um, and I think if we can show that to the world that there's gonna be a lot of like people uh, see but then like we get this like have to figure out how to like fade that better I don't know um, but uh, we always talk about like what it would take to um, make make things out of like you know like he got me into 3d printing he was definitely one of the big forces for that um, but it, it's fun to think about like if you really had to uh, like make this out of metal um what would you use um he made uh the ring wraith i think it was probably the uh officially the witch king of angmar right from lord of the rings uh but he made the ring wraith um uh not like the gauntlets i think he made like the pauldrons right which are the leg things I think back to my uh, equipping my character in Diablo 2. Uh, um, I'm going to try to use a brush and kind of like brush out this brown. Just to kind of break it up. And I'll have to go over that with something, something else. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, this uh, this friend of mine, he he made him, and I think he made him out of some sort of like thermoplastic, um, and it and they were amazing. They they looked absolutely like legit metal, uh, spot on craftsmanship. It was it was a sight to behold. Um, I always think like, oh man, if you could just get uh, that's that's one of my favorite things to uh do with like um with like all the props and stuff is if you sell it uh with sound effects and stuff like that um you can definitely yeah that looks really <laughs> that looks really bordery son of a gun yeah i'll have to fix that blended in somehow um but um yeah right there 
you can see that right there that uh right <laughs> look at that it's like oh boy were you were you drunk on power when you made this immortan no self-respecting warlord would go out wearing that got a poser of the wastes Again, thankfully, uh, this has enough, uh, this has enough, um, kind of built in, I, I keep wanting to say like built in sloppiness, but it's, but it's not sloppiness, right? It's, it's just this kind of like, a, uh, rough around the edges kind of kind of appeal to it that um, aesthetic right this like rough around the edges aesthetic that I I love I that's one of my favorite things about the post-apocalyptic kind of take on things um, and again allow me to yet again gush on George Miller but uh, like I love that there's so much attention to detail in those movies as to um, like using uh, sports protective equipment uh, as body armor and you know stuff like that uh, that's like this like it's it's rough around the edges because that's all people have so they have to you know get inventive about what they use for uh, protective wear and all that stuff I just yeah I think that is so fun um, and that's definitely uh, something I would love to be able to just say that like <laughs> you're just sitting around someday going huh what uh, what could I use as as like Mad Max gear because um, you see it sometimes right uh, The Walking Dead uh, Walking Dead, they have, um, they have, uh, like, police riot gear and stuff on. But that, that kind of feels like it, uh, it makes sense. And, I mean, of course it makes sense. But what I mean is, like, in, in terms of expectations, that's like, oh, cool, it's been, I don't know, Two years, three years, four years since the, you know, the collapse of society, and uh, and I just like happened upon a police precinct or, you know, what whatever, right? Some sort of like, ooh, this is uh, this is like the bruisers of the old world, and so of course I'm going to take their vestments and uh, wear them because that that makes sense. Whereas, like, I really love the Mad Max approach, and, and I've certainly enjoyed some Walking Dead, too, but um, I really enjoy the Mad Max approach, where it's like, it's almost as if, right, like, it's like little kids that grew up only kind of understanding echoes and ghosts of the past, and that's, um, that's fun. Oh, hey, Alan, nice to see you on here. I am, <laughs> yes, I should definitely use an airbrush. Oh, there you go. I think that was the like, and, or no, no, that's this one. Oh, man. This is, uh, someday, someday, folks, we're going to have a, we're going to have a dope camera set up. It's gonna amaze you all, and you're all just gonna be amazed. Um, actually, let me give me one second here. Yeah, let me let me see if I can 
quit all these things and then come on back so you're only going to hear the sweet sound of my voice for just a moment um, I don't know something is something's going crazy So we got that. All right. And then if we run another one. Yeah. Well, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm having a world of a hard time getting this stuff figured out, but. So we got this crazy guy cam. Um, yeah. Uh, someday, my friends. Okay. <sighs> if that beeping is on the call or on the recording I'm going to be very sad <laughs> can't tell. I just can't tell. Um, well, we'll hold this up here. Um, so we've got a bit of trouble with like the brown around the edges now. And so I'm going to try to do what I did here with, um, I believe it was using some gray to try and Try to dry brush it a bit. Um, I guess the other thing I should be careful of is putting the uh, <laughs> putting the mask in the paint. That would be how you say the suboptimal. Um, This is where, uh, thankfully, the um, the silver will help me out a little bit. Because if we dry brush onto the silver, it won't won't quite matter as much. I think that out of all the things I've painted, dry brushing is like the toughest thing to do. Um, I'm going to try something out here. 
because this is driving me bonkers. Oop. So we're going to take this, cancel out of this thing, kill it. We're going to go to this one. Give me one second here. Still here. Still with you fine folks in spirit. Okay, give me one sec. One sec, one sec. There we go. And... Yeah, it's just funny. I don't know why. Um, I don't know. Technical difficulties. We're having, we're having troubles. We're having troubles. Um, it's always tricky to. I don't know. I'm getting like stuttery video. I don't know. Ah, uh, I mean it's it's okay. I know it's probably obnoxious to watch. Um, we're gonna we're gonna just switch this to an easy one. Um, um, mm, 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 mm. Bear with me here. Boom. There we go. Um, and we'll just leave it at this. Uh, all right. So, uh, didn't get as much ground covered tonight, and that's and that's okay, right? I mean, part of some of this was just to kind of like touch up this stuff and um. What I, what I really was hoping to do was be able to uh, get this ready for some uh, uh, matte painting. Uh, so I'm going to be taking this and then just going over it with a very uh, dull, meaning not shiny, um, uh, matte, matte job. And... Hopefully that should Hopefully that should um, Do it pretty well um, But yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's, Oh man uh, yeah, uh, Alan, to your question, uh, aging it, um, it's kind of the tough part, like, I aged it up there, um, and then, I mean, like, I hope this can come across well, like, the top, right, the top has a nice, like, gunmetal kind of, like, it's shiny, and it's, on camera, it's tougher right again I'm using an iPhone camera so like it's not capturing it very well um, it it looks shinier on camera than I think it really is uh, whereas down here I don't think I age these so these really come across as like oddly shiny right because you got like the print lines going through which actually kind of work as you know battle scars or something like that so they're okay but um yeah, those those are a bit uh, those are a bit too new looking. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go over them a little bit with uh, with the miniature miniature painter's secret slash cheat device Citadel Null Oil. Um, but I am going to get a less aggressive brush. Sometimes check my hands for stuff. 
sometimes this can get a little get a little in your face <laughs> also uh, again I suppose not that you can really see it much on camera um, but this stuff has a way of like not looking like it's doing anything until it like does too much <laughs> so it's um, it can be tricky at times to uh, I'm gonna kind of go over some of this other stuff around it um, the idea is to blend like blend the wear and tear right so that it looks like it was um, aged in some sort of like uniform well not not uniform but like a if if one part of the thing looks like it's brand spanking new and then another part of the thing looks like it's been aged 50 years right that's that's weird um, and so the more you can do to avoid that um, I am going to put kind of a drop here on these brass pieces uh, well brass pieces like the the tops here <laughs> this is this is why I wanted two cameras <laughs> uh, yeah that'll work pretty well as long as it gets in that kind of like flathead screwdriver spot that just looks a little dark uh, Just to kind of give it that like worn, worn in the middle way. Yeah. <sighs> My sleeping angels. <laughs> Talking to a friend recently who was like, "Yeah, my kids never, never like, they just went to bed." And, you know, sometimes we'd have to, like, put them back in bed, but it never seemed like it was a problem. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah. That, that has never been my experience. Uh, just a good reminder that, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we only know what we assume is normal. And, uh, but, um, we sometimes just assume that our normal is everyone's normal and that is not always the case um so oh that kind of that kind of dulls a little bit I don't, I don't know if i love that um i'll kind of go over like the screw points again with a bit more of this stuff so that it kind of gives it some contrast um, and stands out like extra contrasty um, yeah Oop. a little wild there Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that, uh, yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> it's difficult for me to say like what it's like, oh, that's perfect. Like, nah, I, if you're anything like me, you can always find where like something like, eh, that could be better. Um, so one of the one of the main reasons why I started doing painting is because I wanted to um, I wanted to be able to basically just 
move on with projects. And this is a good way that it forces me to not get so hung up with projects that I get paralyzed and never finish it. So um, I am calling this project done. And uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with how it came out. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun to wear. The next time I guess I need to look like a horrific warrior of the wastes. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, thank you for sticking with me. I will, I will definitely figure out my technical issues for next time. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm Neil Oler. Uh, thanks for watching Paint Dry with me. And, uh, I will see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. You guys have a wonderful evening.